Hi everyone, I'm Asya Labusha and you're watching Celeb Hotspot. How excited are you to reunite with your fellow George Lopez co-stars in the Lopez reunion special? Wow, <laughs> that is a decade-long worthy question. We hadn't seen each other in over 10 years uh, for the most part and when George reached out to me on Instagram and suggested that we all do a reunion on his new show, I was, I was ecstatic because I've seen his show before. Lopez on TV land and I couldn't imagine not doing it so immediately I jumped on board and I'm glad I did because it was uh, it was a really worthwhile reunion which you guys will see very soon. What can fans expect from this reunion episode? And that's my puppy over there. <laughs> fans can expect I hope that they experience what I experience entering the show which is a sense of comfort and a sense of familiarity and returning home. Uh, filming the episode, it felt like home. We, we returned back into the rhythm of things. There was no warm-up necessary, which I had anticipated, but um, I think a lot of laughter. There's a human touch to it that I think fans will, will understand and appreciate from back during the George Lopez days, and I'm relieved that George kept that because that's one of his most beautiful traits is that sense of um, humanity that he puts in his comedy. So you'll see that and you'll see us. And so that's it. Can you tell us about your role in the reunion special? No, I cannot. I cannot tell you a single word except I will be in it. Oh, ooh, I can tell you I am playing myself. I'm not playing Carmen, guys. I am playing Masiala, which is a first for me and more difficult than it sounds. So that's exciting. I can tell you that. And I can tell you that Constance is playing herself too. But that's it. How do you think fans will react to this episode? <laughs> Celeb Hotspot. Do you know something? Because that is a very insightful question. And I think once the fans watch this, they'll understand my reaction. How will the fans react? Well, delighted is one word, shocked. I think it'll be quite, uh, oof, quite shocking. It would be the only word I could describe it as without revealing too much. Possibly unpredictable, although I feel some fans would expect it. When and where can the fans watch the special? So Lopez airs on TV land, so that's where we can find it. When exactly? I don't know. So if you know, and you have any insight, please do let me know. You can reach out to me on Instagram. Usually the actor is the last to know. That's unfortunately the case. And maybe if we're lucky, we get a DVD. Can you tell us about your role in Sharknado 5? Oh yeah, I would love to tell you about my role in Sharknado 5. I return as Gemini, a sword-wielding hold no prisoners warrior who fillets sharks for breakfast. And I cannot tell you how incredible that feels to just let loose and just play that intensity. What I love about her is that they juxtapose her, her strength and her courage with a sense of compassion and love. And I find that hard. It's, a, it's an interesting balance and they've really captured it. So, you know, I did my stunts in the last Sharknado. I did some stunts in this Sharknado. And I'm excited to be part of the family. It really is a family. Can you tell us about Sharknado 5? And will there be more movies in the franchise? What can I say? I can't even post pictures on Instagram because I'm not allowed to reveal it. So let me think. Uh, okay, so as we all know with the other Sharknados, with every movie, it just expands bigger and more interesting with, with an interesting uh, dynamic of sharks. You know, we have it where it covers, so it starts with California and then it just expands to the, to the United States. Um, now we've just reached further, okay? And also, we're exploring different dimensions. Will there be more movies in the franchise? No, not at all. 
Can you tell us about the Lifetime movie Forgotten Evil and your role in it? Yes, I would absolutely love to. So it, it, to this day, it stays one of my most um, rewarding roles, and I'll explain why in a bit. But I was initially approached um, when Anthony Ferrante, the director of Forgotten Evil, who also directed Sharknado in the entire movie franchise, so you know I worked with him before, um, he approached me and he said, I have the script, and I keep envisioning you in it as we're rewriting the script. I see you, and I think you can play this part. It's um, the character Renee. It's a very demanding role. It's going to require a lot of tears and a lot of growth, but I know you can do this. Obviously, I'm like, bring it on, you know, since when does an actor turn down that kind of meaty role? So I read the script and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, what I was most intrigued by is the fact that the audience grows with Renee because she enters the stage, as I like to call it, she enters the stage completely effaced by society. She has no likes, no dislikes. She can't even remember what food tastes like. She has no preferences. She doesn't have family. And I love the idea that the audience, in a sense, can grow with the character. Because how often do we get to see that in a film where a character doesn't have a backstory? She's literally like born into a fetal position. That's basically how you find her. And you grow with her. And I love that. Um, I was intrigued by that craft. And also, I loved working with uh, my co-stars, Angie Dick and Kyle McKeever. You know, we were all the same age. We all had a, like a, this, this brimming passion for the craft. So you know, we were in a different town. So we were just exploring it. We were like kids playing. And um, we all loved the, the craft. So it was fun to, to work with them. And they really took it to the next level, which inspired me, of course, as you can imagine. Um, but Forgotten Evil is about a girl. It's a coming of age. It's like a little genre shifting. Um, coming of age, she um, enters society enveloped in mystery. No one can place her anywhere. No one is holding themselves accountable for her. And it's her finding herself. And when the past catches up to her, and it's a horrific past, that's where her journey begins. And that's where she needs to redefine her identity and take control of herself and her, uh, her opportunities in the future. And that's something I think we can all relate to to some degree where we hold ourselves accountable and say enough is enough. And this is my new life and this is my new story. So now you see why I'm absolutely in love with the script and I hope you love the film. Do you have any upcoming projects that your fans could look forward to. Yes. I I can't I can't say anything. I know though when it does come out. I hope you'll be very happy. Um gosh, can I give a hint? No, I can't. But you'll see. I'm also um revising my second novel for publication. It's called The Journals of Olympia Pole. So that's keeping me occupied while this big news is about to happen. So stay tuned guys. Where can we find you on social media? Ooh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, my handle is uh, Masiela Lucia for Facebook and Masiela Lucia for Instagram. And guess what it is for Twitter? Nope, not Masiela Lucia. Uh-uh, just Masiela. That's it. So... <laughs>